met Glue. Nice to meet you. Another person that I just met, in fact, about five minutes ago rather than a few hours ago, like Soraya. That's right. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Nice to meet you, too. So you are uh, working on operations at Get Glue, and I understand that you're working on some very interesting new tools for the app. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Sure. I absolutely can. So just taking a step back, GetGlue is a second screen application for viewers of television. Mm -hmm. And you can interact with friends and fans around the show that you're watching. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get rewards for doing that. And then there's a discovery component. And we launched it about two years ago. Yeah. And we've learned uh, an awful lot over that time. But we've also gained a lot of data from our uh, user base. And so what we're going, uh, or what we have been working on, and it will be launching uh, within the coming weeks or, you know, in, in, within the short future, right. uh, is an app which extends the discovery uh, around really what will be the next generation of a guide. And so if you think of the linear guide on television today, it's flawed because it's not personal, it's mm -hmm. not filtered, and it doesn't have social data. And we think that you know, all of those tools have emerged over the past, uh, you know, five, ten years online, and we now take it for granted, but it hasn't penetrated that experience for television viewers. And we, we see a clear path to delivering a delightful experience around that. So the whole idea behind the second screen is actually, it's something that I use, and I also have a hard time convincing my friends to use. Reason being is that we all have different habits when we're sitting in front of the television on the couch, um, or wherever we might be watching a show. Obviously, if I love Game of Thrones, and anybody who loves Game of Thrones as much as I do knows that all you want to do is talk about it. You want to you want to talk about it with your friends. It's really fun to be able to watch it at the same time with them. Mm. So what do you do if you're not all in the same room? And Get Glue is great for that because I can kind of check into that experience. I'm not really geolocating myself anywhere specifically, but I'm checking into that particular show. You can do the same, and we're sharing information that way. But how do I get the word out that this is actually a fun service to use? Do you have to depend on third-party social tools like a Twitter to say, I'm using something called Get Glue, you should try it out? And how challenging is that? Mm -hmm. So I think that distribution is probably the biggest challenge for any young um, startup, right? In the sense where how do you break through the noise of all of the other opportunities that are out there for end users to, to interact with. Mm -hmm. And we, like many other companies, have a, a number of different approaches towards solving that problem. The first is, as you say, uh, on our platform, it's a very natural experience to share outbound to Facebook and Twitter. So something like a third uh, of all of the check-ins around a television show are shared outbound which is great for us as a service because it just drives a lot of inbound volume to help discover the, the platform. Mm -hmm. The other way that it, uh, we're, we're benefiting from a distribution channel is with partners, network partners. So we focused within the US first, uh, and we're working with about 75 different television networks, uh, basically uh, every one of note. Mm -hmm. And they're promoting us on a regular basis to their fans, um, both socially but also on air, saying, get glue, check in to socialize with your friends and fans around Glee uh, and earn exclusive Glee rewards. And so that's been the second great uh, distribution outlet for us. But the third biggest one continues to be word of mouth, right? Is that, I, I know that you talked about this in the previous Q&A, and that is product is so, so critical for a company like ours. And if you can delight the user on a regular basis, that's the best way to grow, right? Is that you, you, you hear people talk about you know, how are you going to instrument your service to grow? The real way to do that is to create a delightful experience that people enjoy using, and they'll just naturally tell their friends. Uh, and that's, from our perspective, as well as uh, other companies in a similar space, uh, are, that's where we're seeing the biggest growth come from. So GitGlue has been around a while. Um, your model has also been around a while. And you mentioned something like rewards. Now, of course, I know what you mean. But I think a lot of people experience fatigue when it's like gamification, oh, there's another game thing, or I gotta collect points, and I'm playing against my friends. How do you, how do you push through that? Mm. When there, there are a lot of social services, a lot of social apps that people could download, and clearly we can't all use them all. Absolutely, so uh, that is certainly the case, and it's one that we're well aware of. But I think if you look at the 
lineup of, of applications that have performed well over the past two, three years, they've had some, you can call it a gimmick if you're cynical, mm -hmm. but you can, you, you, know, you, you can view it from a positive light. They've had some sort of mechanic that has helped them get the momentum rolling right off of the bat. Um, filters in, in, in uh, Instagram, right? Is that now everybody has a filter and it's a little bit tired. Right. Uh, but it was one way for them to start to generate activity because if you launch purely with the social value and there's nobody on the platform, you know, you'll have tumbleweeds rolling around and it, it, will, get, it will not gain any traction. Right, people just will stop coming right. back. People will stop coming back. And so what we found is the rewards that we have, it's a lightweight game, a gamification on the platform. It appeals to some number of viewers, mm -hmm. but those number of viewers were enough for us to make one step forward in the density of our social network so that we could start to use their data to provide a more meaningful experience for other users on the platform who weren't necessarily interested in gamification. Mm -hmm. And I think we've seen that um, with other apps. You know, if you look at the Foursquare relaunch recently, uh, their explore functionality takes a lot of the focus away from the single check-in and from the gamification layer, and it really focuses their app on passive consumption. And I think that we're seeing as, as these services mature and gain users as well as data, they're able to provide a much different um, and more broadly focused user experience. What, as a team, uh, or even you personally, have you most learned about the art of how people watch television since you started working on Get Glue's mission to have us all using that's, the second screen? That's a, that's a wonderful question. <laughs> uh, and I would love to say that we teed this up ahead of time, but we haven't. No. Uh, <laughs> we, we barely know each other. <laughs> we generate an awful lot of data around television viewership. Um, similar with movies viewership. So you can check into television or movies on our platform. Um, we get now you know, tens of millions of check-ins around television uh, every single month. Mm -hmm. We have as many check-ins to a single episode as Nielsen has on their entire sample set within the US. Wow. And so that gives you a, a sense of the size. Uh, about a year ago now, we hired a, a data scientist away from Northrop Grumman, um, just a brilliant, brilliant individual. And he's been helping us make sense of the data that we're seeing. And it, there's a couple of profound things that, that may sound simple, but when you think about them, they're kind of interesting because it shows the path of what's going to be possible with this data in the, in the months and years to come. Um, the first is live TV is still important, um, but then there's behavioral trends around that in the sense where we can map and show you how different types of consumers who use different types of platforms, iOS, Android, mobile web, uh, how their television viewing differs from one another. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, you know, is interesting to see in chart form. The other thing how is... How do they differ, the <laughs> iOS and Android users? Oh, I, I can't recall off the top of my head. <laughs> um, They're but both I, watching very high caliber television, right. I'm sure, yeah. So the other, the other insights that we're able to glean is that there's a, there's a correlation between activity around uh, the social aspect and a television show's ratings... Mm -hmm. But it differs within genre, which isn't too, too surprising. But when you think about that, right, the, the correlation between rating and activity is true within genre, but then it differs between, you know, teen, uh, psycho thriller, drama, right, if you want to get really specific, um, all the way to reality or sports. And I think that we're seeing that a different type of viewer wants a different type of experience on the platform. What about the folks who say, okay, the Oscars are on, you know, the Academy Awards are on, that's a live event that a lot of people tune in, it's a one-off, right? And it's really fun to talk about that. That's one of those events, Super Bowls is another great example um, of something that you really wanna watch live. It's not the same otherwise. How do you convince uh, those people to take the conversation to get glue rather than just tweeting about it or being on IM with each other? Right, so that's something that we're fighting basically within the product uh, on a regular basis. And we're still not nearly as competitive with those larger social networks uh, as we should be with the large um, main events, such mm -hmm. as Super Bowl, such as the MTV VMAs. Mm -hmm. um, but for episodic television, 
where about 16%, 16 to 25% of all of the social activity around that show is coming from our platform. Now we're, you know, in terms of relative size, significantly smaller than that, which means that there's some sort of experience on our platform that's resonating with viewers for conversating or con conversing with their friends and fans uh, around that, uh, that story arc or narrative of the episode. Uh, when it comes to the live TV events, where we're trying to compete uh, is by having more structured conversation delivered in a more delightful way. Um, and that's just a whole bunch of gobbledygook, right? So let me break that down for you. And that means, you know, who here has done a, a Twitter hashtag search during any of these main events, right? Most of us. Um, you know, they, they broadcast the fact that there's 7,000 tweets per second when Beyonce's baby bump came out, right? Right. That amounts to shouting, right? And, and it, it, to me, it, it reminds me of an AOL chat room from 1998 where right. it, it's hard for me as an individual to glean any personal value from that, right? Because it's scrolling and you have to hit refresh because it says there's, you know, 600 more tweets to view. Mm -hmm. Whereas we are focused on a conversation, so there's some structure to our conversation. But then we also filter for your friend comments. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as interestingness. And so based on the quality of the comment, the quality of the replies, the number of replies, we're able to show you the most popular, the best content for you to consume around that event. And we think that it, as we continue to invest into those algorithms around servicing um, the delightful experience or the, the delightful conversation, we'll continue to win more and more activity around the events. What is, how do the numbers break down between, you're on iOS and you're on Android. RIM? Just uh, iOS, Android? An, uh, iOS, Android, uh, and then a HTML5 mobile app for every other platform. So, every, so everybody can participate. Between the two big guys, iOS and Android, uh, where's, not, I know that you don't know off the top of your head who's watching what, but where's the most engagement? By far the most engagement happens through iOS. Do you think that's because of the iPad? Uh, no. Be, partly because our iPad app is um, one or two generations behind, mm -hmm. and it will receive a significant update uh, in the immediate future. That's good. Um, I'll talk about that on iPad today. It's right. one of my shows. <laughs> Thanks what, for making content for me. <laughs> what has been interesting for us is that the mobile site, while not as much as iOS, has outpaced Android in terms of activity. And there's also an awful lot of Android users who have elected to use the mobile site. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure what to make of that. Because the two apps are pretty identical? Um, they have their differences. Yeah. Um, but the, the user experience across all of the, the deliveries is, is pretty similar. Now, is that the sort of thing that you might scratch your heads and wonder why that is? Do you care? Do you care that Android users are preferring the, uh, the mobile web experience to an app that you built for them? We care in the sense that it's always important to understand what is the right experience, what is the right value that we can deliver to our, to our customers. Mm -hmm. um, and it also matters because the mobile app experience offers developers uh, a number of different tools to help with retention and ongoing engagement, such as notifications and other um, functionality like that. And so it would be nice for us to continue to have them uh, convert into mobile app users. Right. Sometimes I see uh, it, it'll be a, a company that's kind of experimenting with the second screen, right? Like I'm watching a commercial and it'll, it'll say, Shazam this song, you know? And so, because it, this is a company that assumes that I'm probably sitting there with my laptop open or maybe I'm browsing my phone or something, so I can't engage with them. Mm. But that's not necessarily that company's core business. Do you find, and this is actually a question I asked Soraya um, in our last Q&A, do you find that doing one thing well is going to trump a big company like Facebook that you could, you could add some sort of get glue functionality into Facebook, but it's a much bigger experience overall. Yeah, I, I mean, 100%. Yeah. Um, 100, 100%. I love this question. Uh, my, my good friend Andrew Parker from Spark Capital some number of years ago did a blog post saying, you know, who's going to be the Craigslist killer? Mm -hmm. and, and I'll come around to Facebook, but, but stick with me on this. <laughs> Who's going to be the, the Craigslist killer? And he said, it's already happening. And what he did was he took the, the Craigslist homepage, and for every subcategory of Craigslist, he showed the equivalent app that had gone very deep in that vertical to, del to deliver 
a, a, an exceptional experience for that one use case. Um, one of my favorites is uh, Airbnb with the ability to, to sublet, right, uh, on Craigslist. And that kind of verticalization attack against Craigslist has been happening for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And it's quite interesting to see that we're seeing the exact same thing happen on Facebook now, or, or to Facebook, I should say. And that is um, partly driven by, by these devices uh, and the, the focused experience that they force. We're seeing a very deep vertical delivery of functionality at the service layer from any number of, of parties, right? So if you think about the functions on Facebook or the features of Facebook, most of them map up one-to-one -one with some you know, fast-growing service. Facebook Photos, Instagram, right? They were so concerned about it that they went and spent a billion dollars on it. Mm. Um, people were using photos in the status update to share the food that they were consuming. And out comes an app called Food Spotting that can deliver features more uh, tailored to that experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think, you know, Twitter and the status update is a perfect example of that. Uh, we saw that a number of people were using Facebook to share the entertainment that they were watching, right? I'm watching um, Golden Globes. Mm -hmm. And the experience, because Facebook is a broad platform, could not go very deep, whereas uh, with our service, we can deliver, you know, one, two, three layers of functionality below that piece of content that's the right experience for the consumer at that point. Well, we are out of time now, but I just want to uh, make sure I know when can I expect a Get Glue refresh? I know you said you're working on a lot of stuff. You've got an iPad app that's coming out pretty soon. What's, what's, when should I mark my calendar? Ahead of fall TV. Okay. <laughs> All right. So by the end of summer. Very good. Right. Nice and vague. Thank you yeah. so much, Fraser. Thank you, Sarah. And thanks to all of you for being here with us. We're done.